when we find people with with uh, hands tied behind their back and decapitated such things i don't understand i don't comprehend the kids who were killed and tortured so it wasn't enough just to kill for those criminals. Maybe they wanted to take gold or uh, washing machines and they were killing them, but they were also torturing them. President Zelensky of Ukraine has accused Russia of committing genocide following the withdrawal of Russian troops from Kyiv. Now, while they may have uh, withdrawn troops uh, near the capital of the country, they're still attacking certain regions of Ukraine. And what they've left behind in certain parts of Ukraine are pretty, it's pretty shocking, terrible. And I wanna warn everyone that at some points in this story, there will be some graphic imagery. But independent journalists who went into the town of Bucha, just northwest of the capital over the weekend found the streets littered with bodies. The dead were wearing civilian clothing and some had their hands tied behind their backs, apparently executed. Others were buried in a mass grave. More than 300 residents were killed according to the town's mayor. Now, Human Rights Watch has done its own independent investigation into possible war crimes committed by the Russian troops. I always like to rely more on you know independent sources rather than just regurgitating what either side in this war has to say. And here's what Human Rights Watch was able to report and also corroborate through their investigation. A woman told Human Rights Watch that a Russian soldier had repeatedly raped her in a school in Kharkiv. In the Kharkiv region, where she and her family had been sheltering on March 13th. She said that he beat her and cut her face, neck, and hair with a knife. The next day, the woman fled to Kharkiv, where she was able to get medical treatment and other services. Human Rights Watch reviewed two photographs, which the woman shared with them, showing her facial injuries. So, not only is, is rape taking place, uh, executions of civilians uh, appears to also be taking place. A witness told Human Rights Watch, for instance, that soldiers forced five men to kneel on the side of the road, pulled their t-shirts over their heads and shot one of the men in the back of the head. He fell over, the witness said, and the woman present at the scene screamed. Russian forces also um, in the village of Staryi Baikiv in Cherniev region rounded up at least six men on February 27th and later executed them according to the mother of one of the men who had been nearby when her son and another man were apprehended and who saw the dead bodies of all six. And then I just wanna give you one other example and then I wanna hear what you think, Cenk. On March 6th, Russian soldiers in the village of Borzul or Vorzel, about 50 kilometers northwest of Kyiv, threw a smoke grenade into a basement, then shot a woman and a 14 year old child as they emerged from the basement where they had been sheltering. A man who was with her in the same basement when she died from her wounds two days later provided the information to Human Rights Watch. The child also died immediately, he said. And of course, Russia taking a page out of their Syria playbook claims that not only is this all a false flag, it's all lies, they're not doing it. Any reports to the contrary of what they have to say is seen as a provocation. So Cenk, again, very similar to what we saw in Syria with the use of chemical weapons and other terrible treatment of civilians on the ground there. Yeah, so I was watching a CBS uh, report on it, and they show the cities, and they're absolutely leveled, right? They're totally destroyed, dead people in the streets. And at that exact time, as they're showing that footage, they gave the the denial from the Russians and said that it was all staged, or that the Ukrainians had done it themselves. And as you look at the whole city, you're like, really? The Ukrainians did that to their own city and to all of their own cities? No, I mean, it's propaganda beyond all reason. So only Aaron Mate could believe it. Right. Uh, okay, so oh, look at the Ukrainians. Uh, what a terrible thing they have done to themselves. Yeah, yes, I got it, I got it. Okay, only propaganda say absurd things like that. Um, so now, unfortunately, uh, there's, 
There's bad news here, which I'll get to in a second from Russia. But why why are the Russians doing these atrocities? There's two main reasons. One, it is Putin's playbook. It's what he did in Chechnya, and what he did in Syria, and what he's doing now in Ukraine. He does it every time, and he thinks part of the point is to intimidate the local population into surrendering. And that might work in Chechnya, where the rest of the world is not paying attention and is considered within your territory. And and so, especially countries like China don't want to get into anything where they're scrutinized for things they do within their own territory. You might be able to get away with that when you do it to Muslims, because no one else in the world, certainly not the West cares, right? But you're not getting away with it in, in Europe, we can all see it. And it's not gonna work, the Ukrainians have shown incredible resolve. But there's a second reason why they're doing it. Some of these soldiers are going rogue. And what I found interesting, Anna, is that they were trying to get, in almost every instance, citizens in different cities say they about the looting. Now the looting seems like the least important crime, but you find something within that story. They're getting trying to get firewood, gas, food, and clothing. Which means that the Russian troops are having old world problems. Mm-hmm. Like American troops might get you know IEDs, they might have a thousand different problems when they're trying to occupy a country like Iraq or Afghanistan. But they're not gonna run out of clothes. They're not gonna need to steal local firewood. So this Russian invasion is going very poorly. And the, and obviously their supply lines are a disaster. So some of the Russian troops are getting super mad. Uh, they didn't expect that they were gonna get killed at, at the rates that they're getting killed. And they're starting to take it out on the Ukrainian population. And yeah. Yeah. I think I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, you know, you're also seeing uh, Russian troops just kind of give up uh, because of how awful it's been for them, how ill prepared they've been, and how just how unprepared they've been for like the fierce resistance from uh, the Ukrainians. And I think you're right because when you look at what they're looting, what they're stealing from the very civilians that they brutalize or murder, um, it's, it is typically things like firewood and, and clothing and stuff like that. Um, but I did wanna also go to uh, this next video, uh, which is also uh, from the uh, CNN interview that Zelensky did over the weekend, uh, Face the Nation. Because he was asked, look, considering all the brutality, considering all the war crimes that have been committed, do you honestly think that you want to engage in peace negotiations with Vladimir Putin? And I think the answer from Zelensky was a good one. I wanna highlight it. I also wanna warn the audience that in the beginning of this video, you're gonna see incredibly graphic imagery of the civilians who were killed. But it shows you the extent to which you know these war crimes have been committed by the Russian troops and just how, how brutal it's been. With that said, let's watch. Your team shared with us a video, images that your government has gathered of what has been left behind outside of Kyiv that I do wanna share with our viewers. And I want to ask you about it. Looking and listening to what Vladimir Putin has said, he's called Ukraine not a real country. He said it's controlled by little Nazis. He's called you a drug addled thug. Is he someone you can negotiate with? But as a president, I have to do it. Any war has to end, just end. I'm not talking about ending this with peace, because peace in this situation when there are thousands of people killed is something that I'm not fine with. But there is no any other way, that's I'm saying as a president. There is no any other way but the dialogue, if we don't want hundreds of thousands millions to die. And he's he's right about that. I mean, he's, you know, of course, asking for more assistance from the United States, asking for even tougher sanctions against Russia. But peace negotiations, I mean, it's the only way out. It's the only way to end this. In addition to other forms of pressure that have been implemented against Russian oligarchs and you know the financial system and all of that. But yeah, he has no choice. I mean, what else is he gonna do? Because 
If you don't engage in these negotiations, this could go on for months and months. They could level other parts of Ukraine, much like they did in, in Mariupol. And by the way, we don't know the extent of damage. I mean, we know the extent of damage when it comes to the buildings and the property and all of that in, in Mariupol, but we don't know how many civilians have died yet. It's been completely encircled by Russian troops. It's very hard to get access to that part of Ukraine. It's been a complete and utter disaster. You. Zelensky's right, it, this needs to end and, and you have to be willing to engage in those talks, even considering the war crimes that are being committed by Putin and his troops. Yeah, so uh, Zelensky also called it a genocide, what's happening. But at the end of the day, you don't get to negotiate with your friends, you have to negotiate with your enemies. That's how negotiation works. And so, uh, and he's right, at the end, you must have peace. And the quicker, the better for Ukraine. Uh, and so it's easy to be a tough guy American and go, oh no, the Ukrainians should keep fighting and dying. But he's representing his own people. The disturbing fact that I promised you earlier is that in Russia, Putin's popularity is still at 83%. So remember, media is everything and they have shut off every other media. So they have no idea, the Russian citizens have no idea what's going on in Ukraine. They're only getting Russian state propaganda. It's like only reading gray zone. You'll have no idea what's actually happening in the world. And so um, so that's why Putin is still very popular at home. Uh, and now the United Nations Secretary General is saying, it doesn't look like the Russians are withdrawing. It looks like they're rearming. Uh, so if Putin is still, very popular and the war is making him more popular at home. Uh oh, that means it could last much longer. Yeah, and I wanted to end on one other point. Uh, you know, Biden has has not signed on to the genocide terminology to describe what's happening yet. But he, of course, has condemned the very obvious war crimes that are being committed. But the question is, okay, so if you're willing to admit that there are war crimes and there should be accountability, what does accountability look like? And I'm gonna be a little critical of the United States here because there's some question as to whether or not the International Criminal Court should be part of this in order to investigate it and, and recommend the consequences for, for Russia. But remember, the United States doesn't believe in the International Criminal Court. And the reason why it doesn't believe in the International Criminal Court, the ICC, is because the ICC wants to investigate war crimes committed by Israel and the US ain't about that. And so the second possibility is, okay, well, what about the UN Security Council? But it's real hard for the UN UN Security Council to carry out any type of consequence because Russia is a permanent member of the UN Security Council and they can veto any type of proposed consequence for Russia. So really, I mean, it's interesting because we have these discussions about the Geneva Convention, about war crimes and all of that. And look, let's keep it real. The United States, of course, commits war crimes of its own and defends war crimes of other allies. But if the US was actually genuinely, legitimately concerned about war crimes and accountability, how do you actually carry out whatever accountability or consequences? There really is no foolproof way of doing it, which is why the United States has gotten away with committing its own war crimes in you know wars that it waged in like the Middle East, for instance. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.